Hello everyone, welcome to another episode on Blender Shader Nodes. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make this layered terrain effect using just a couple shader nodes and a couple modifiers. That's right, no geometry nodes for this one. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's clear this scene and add in a new plane. As you could probably guess, this effect is made with a ton of alpha planes, or planes with an alpha texture applied to them. So let's add in an array modifier to get those planes. Let's switch it from relative offset to constant offset. And offset the Z by 0 0.02 and the distance uh, for the X value to zero. There we go. And now let's set the amount of layers to something like 50. That should be pretty good. And we want this to be ar around uh, one meter long because that'll give us our gradient for the alpha clip. So now that we have this, we can go and let, let's round out the corners a little bit. Let's add in a bevel node, set it to vertices, make sure it's before the array modifier. And let's just round out the edges. I find that just looks a bit better, and I think you'll find that as well. So now that we have this, let's go and add our material, because right now it looks kind of like just, a, just layers, nothing special about it. Let's add in our material. Let's go and input our position. So we could do this two ways. We could either get the local position, which will follow the object around, or we could get the geometry position, which will follow the world space, not the object. And these can be used for different effects. I'm going to be using the geometry position because we can animate this in a very cool way later on. Okay, now let's add in our noise texture. We're just going to be using a regular 3D noise texture because that makes... Uh, the best effect as I've seen. We could test a Voronoi later on, but just until we get these settings set up, let's use the noise texture. And then what we're going to do is use a converter separate XYZ node to get the Z position. This will give us the height of each layer until it hits one. As we can see here, this goes up to one. So now we could go and do something kind of special. We could go and take a math node, set it to greater than, and what the greater than a uh, math node does is, once I find it, there we go, it'll give us a clip value. There we go. So the high parts will be 1 and the low parts will be 0, with no in between. But if we hook up the z-axis to this, we can see that we are now getting some sort of terrain effect happening where the ground is 1 and the top is 0. But now let's hook this up into the alpha of this plane. I'm going to change the color just so that in this all white background, it stands out a little bit more. And once we do this, we can see that there's a little bit of an issue. This part right here is just void. That's because we are an Eevee. And to fix that, we change the blend mode from opaque to alpha clip and the shadow mode from opaque to alpha clip. Now let's switch this into cycles for a second. Let me just set the detail to one just so that it's a little less noisy. Let's go into the cycles render engine and you'll see if you have default settings, it'll look something like this. That is because there are not enough alpha layers to uh, compensate for the amount of alpha layers that we have here or alpha passes, my bad. So what you need to do is go into the light paths node and go into the transparent passes and bump it up to something like 70. That'll make it so that you have enough alpha passes, but it will lag your computer a bit more. So let's go back into EV so that we don't have to deal with that. And that is basically the entire effect, but we can animate this. So as you probably saw in the beginning, I animated this so that it would move up over time and then it would loop back to the beginning. And I did this just by taking this keyframing it at this level and then bringing it up by uh, 0 0.02 because that was the layer height doing that setting the interpolation to linear and since the it'll loop because the end of the frame is at 24 frames we can see that this is now looping as simple as that now since this is this will only work if your layer height matches the animation so if i were to offset this it wouldn't loop correctly so just make sure that your Z height is the same as your end keyframe animated height. So we can see 0 0.02 and the modifier 0 0.02. And that's all for that. But as I said before, let's go and check what the Voronoi texture will look with this. Now I already know what it looks like with it because I've done about three takes so far. But we can see if we hook this up, it looks 
a bit like Swiss cheese. Let's set the scale down. And this looks a bit chaotic, but if we invert it, color invert, we can see that, boom, it looks like a ton of spheres, which that looks very cool. I really like that. So yeah, uh, you could use any procedural texture for this. Let's use the magic texture and see how that looks. But make sure to keep your notes a little bit organized. Don't keep adding stuff without uh, organizing it. Now we can see with the magic texture, this looks pretty interesting, even though probably not the effect that we want. Let's see, let's set the depth to 1 and see how that looks. It kind of looks like a wave, or some sort of weird thing. But yeah, that's basically the entire effect. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe, because more content like this will be coming out. Uh, make sure you check out my Twitter page. The, I post updates on there fairly frequently. Uh, check out my Gumroad page. There's a ton of free and paid stuff on there. Check out my Instagram page, of course. And yeah, I will see you in the next tutorial.